After successfully running the topology wizard tool and fixing all line work errors, we are now ready to generate map unit polygons. This step in the workflow is one of the most satisfying parts because you get to finally see your map come to life in color. In this video, we will use the feature class to polygon tool to generate geologic unit polygons. We'll match polygon symbology to our previously defined polygon feature class. We'll learn how to change the attributes of a polygon feature, and we'll learn how to apply transparency to a feature class layer. To start, we can collapse and untoggle the SP mapping topology layer because we are finished with all of the error checking. We can also temporarily untoggle the base maps group layer just to focus in on the contact lines and the polygons which we are about to generate. Navigate to the search bar at the top and type in feature class to polygon. This is a data management tool that we will use to build polygons on our map using the existing line work. Click on the tool and the geoprocessing pane will appear on the right hand side of the screen. Under the input layers, we must specify 1. the map border, 2. geologic contacts, and 3. linear features. Rename the output feature class to SP Geo Units, then click Run. A new feature class layer will be added to the contents pane. If you refresh your Geo database in the catalog pane, you will see that it exists there as well. But perhaps the biggest change you'll notice is that your map has changed into a single solid color. Mine happens to be pink. Fear not, we haven't just created one giant polygon. If you right click the SP Geo units in the contents pane and open up the attribute table, you will see that there is actually numerous polygon features of different sizes that exist. I have a total of 23 polygons. Currently, they are all just the same color. If you are still not convinced, navigate up to the Edit tab and turn on the Select tool. Now, if you click on any of the polygon features on the map or within the attribute table, it will highlight their position. A map with one color is not very informative, so here I'll show you how to import our pre-existing polygon symbology that we had set up in earlier videos. So step one, we need to create a new field in the new Geo Units feature class layer. A field is essentially a column within the attribute table. So we can already see three columns in our attribute table. The first is shape type, which is all polygons. The second is shape length, which is the perimeter of the polygon feature. Shape area, which is the area of the polygon. This is actually pretty useful information if you're trying to calculate the extent or even volume of a certain rock unit, like a lava flow, for example. Click on Add Field. Like we did when we made the first geologic unit feature class, we want to add an attribute field called Unit Name, in which we can specify between our different rock units. Make sure that you change the data type to Text. Then click on the Save Changes icon at the ribbon on top. Then we can close this Fields pane window to view again only the SP Geo Units attribute table. Note the newly created Unit Name field column now exists in our table. Step 2. With the field in place, now we need to modify the symbology of our new SP Geo Units layer. We can do this by importing our previously defined symbology. So go ahead and close out this attribute table for now. Then navigate to the SP Geo Units in the Contents pane, right click and open Symbology. Like we have done in the past, change the drop down menu from Single Symbol to Unique Values. Now we can click on the three horizontal bars in the upper right corner of the Symbology pane, then click Import Symbology. Leave SP Geo Units as the input layer, then specify mapping slash geologic units as the symbology layer. Under the symbology fields, specify type as value field, source field as unit, and target field as unit name. Then click run. This function in ARC will apply and match the symbology of our previously created geologic units feature class 
to the newly generated GeoUnit's polygons feature class that we just made. This way we don't have to manually create the symbology a second time. Look over to the contents pane. You know the operation was successful if you can see the geologic units along with their appropriate label and color underneath the new SP GeoUnits feature class. So nice work everyone, and this is where the real fun begins. It's time to add some color to our map. We do so by changing the attributes of these new individual polygons. Navigate to the Edit tab up top and activate the Select tool. Now you can point and click on any polygon on your map. So here I will start with the SP Mountain Scoria Cone. Once it is highlighted, click on the Attributes icon. This will open up the Attributes pane on the right-hand side of the screen. Click on the icon near where it says Unit Name Null. It is here that we can specify what geologic unit to attribute to the polygon. Click QSC. See how it left the inner crater as gray? That's because there are actually two polygons comprising the SP Mountain Scoria Cone, since we had also inputted linear features, as in the crater rims, to the feature class to polygon tool. Not to worry, uh, click on the smaller polygon inside the crater and change it to QSC as well. Next, I'm going to do the large SP Mountain Lava Flow. Select the polygon and change the attribute to QL. Next, I will attribute the QV degraded vents. And remember, if you can't remember what a particular polygon was supposed to be, you can always toggle back to your satellite imagery for a reminder. Next, add the PK and QS polygons. Once you think you've attributed all the polygons on the map, it is a good practice to check the attribute table to make sure that there are no remaining null value polygons on the map. A quick check shows that all 23 polygons are attributed with a geologic unit. So the polygons are looking great, however, they are currently concealing all of our contacts and linear features. This is a simple fix. We must drag the SP GeoUnit's polygon layer underneath the line work in the drawing order of the contents pane. Drag SP GeoUnits into the mapping group layer below the map border contacts and linear features. This will make Arc draw the line work on top of the polygons. For neatness, you can right click and remove the old geologic units feature class. This does not delete it permanently. You can still access the original feature class in the geo database in the catalog if needed. Now I'll show you another trick to really make your map pop. What we can do is adjust the transparency of the polygons so that our hillshade base map shows through and gives the map some texture and topography. Click once on the SP GeoUnits feature class to highlight it, then navigate to Feature Layer at the top of the ribbon. Under Effects, you will see the Transparency option. Here I will specify a 70% transparency. Now if I toggle the Google Earth satellite imagery off, we are left with our colored hillshade base map. You can play around with different transparency levels to find something that looks good for you. In the next video, I will show you how to label the polygons on the map.